Back in, I'm very well indeed. Back in, imagine what back in today. I'm very well in the middle of August now. I'm very well indeed. It's been a holiday to Bournemouth and a lovely holiday in Bournemouth. And now it's time to vlog and vlog another amazing magic show. One of the best magic shows of all time in many ways. It's actually the very first magic show of the magician David David Caulfield. Of course, this is the first ever magic show. This is an interesting magic show because it's the first ever magic show by the world's greatest magician David Caulfield, of course. So let's sit back and relax and vlog and vlog the next few minutes or so the amazing magic of David Copperfield number one, the very first of David Copperfield's magic shows, the world's greatest magician from 1978. Sit back, relax, let's log on this show and analyse this amazing, very early magic show, also starring Orson Welles from 1978. Okay, it's a classic bit of magic. Here we're going to go. So as I say, it's a very interesting uh, bit of magic show. Isn't it? I'm watching it on television right now, as always. Okay, I'm going to go really a bit slowly because people keep saying I'm going a bit quick and they can't read the subtitles. So I go a bit slowly on this one. Now, of course, David Copperfield, of course, began his career back in the 1960s and early 1970s and went on to become the world's biggest magician. Uh, obviously, headline in Las Vegas today, of course, one of the biggest shows in Las Vegas today. And of course, he went on, of course, from his appearance in 1978 to the very first magic show. He did Comfort Dem Comfort number one, okay. He went on to, of course, do amazing magic illusions. We know he vanished in an airplane, he levitated and vanished in Ferrari. He also walked through the Great Wall of China, of course. He also escaped from Alcatraz Island. He transformed the Bermuda Triangle, of course, as well. He also uh, escaped from a burning tower block, that kind of stuff. So, just a lot of amazing magic on the show over the years, didn't he? He went over Niagara Falls, didn't he? A bit like Harry Houdini did 100 years ago. So, Copperfield became the world's biggest magician of his generation, seriously. Bigger, probably, than other magicians like David Blaine and Chris Angel. And other people like Stephen Roy, Copperfield was numero uno magician probably of all time in many ways. Bigger than, probably bigger than Chung Su, bigger than Howard Thurston, Petey Sabbath. Some of the classic magicians of a hundred years ago, even like Houdini. Uh, Copperfield was a really big magician. Uh, Copperfield, of course, started his career in 1978 on television. He'd been on the magic of ABC. Uh, kind of American TV show, of course. And he came on and was introduced by Orson Welles for this brand new special. It was going to launch his career. Orson Welles himself had a prediction. Orson Welles said that Confield would become a big and massive magician. Of course, Confield really did become a big, massive magician. And to me, and many people who love magic and entertainment, Confield's been number one really the whole time. And I do love Confield. Now, let's have a look at this amazing magic show from 1978. Okay, this is the show that kicked off Confield's career as a big magician and led a pathway to some of the most amazing magic we'd ever seen in our, in our lifetimes. Or maybe we'll ever see, probably. Could of course the amazing Vanishing Statue of Liberty. So Comfort, of course, began the show came okay, introduced by uh, the great Orson Welles, who's I think in his 60s or 70s, pretty old, and he really loves Copperfield, really bigs him up, okay? We then go to kind of a bit of a biography about Copperfield's life as a kid, and now he's about 20 years old. Now this guy's 20 years old, and he's doing a magic show on ABC, big TV magic show, he's 20 years old, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? This is American showbiz for you, isn't it? Everyone starts showing him the showbiz, isn't it? Look at Britney Spears, they all start really young, don't they? So basically, anyway, to go to cut a long story short, we get into the show, and Copperfield, of course, begins the show with a kind of a bit of a routine with him doing kind of some amazing car routines. He actually begins in his bedroom. He kind of has a, a nagging mother who nags him away about doing magic, get a proper job, you know. And he kind of has her on his bed and he kind of he puts a cloth up, drops a cloth, okay, and, he's, and his mum changes into a beautiful kind of young girl, again, assists him and dances with him. It's quite a nice illusion at the beginning of the show. He's kind of a change with his mum on a bed to a pretty kind of young lady. <laughs>
we go from that little vignette into Dr. Vignette into an amazing piece of theatre. Caulfield comes on the stage, dons his beautiful black jacket, looks pretty cool, pretty sharp. He's only about 20 years old. He looks really good and way ahead of his years, seriously. There's some amazing card routines. So these card routines are brilliant, okay? This is like you see with Lance Burton, good magicians like Shimon and Cardini. Check out Cardini, okay? Look at the video Cardini, he's a good magician. Got through some amazing fan productions, card appearance, card disappearance kind of stuff, okay? Really amazing stuff. Right in front of your eyes, okay? It's a really beautiful piece of magic. Check this out right now. This is a bit of Confield doing this simple, amazing piece of card dexterity, manipulation, right in his hands, right in front of your eyes. Amazing stuff. So check this out. Isn't it seriously? We then go from there looking at this to another bit of magic where he has a bit of fun, okay, with a girl. A girl comes to stage, I think this girl from a sort of uh, 80s, 70s sitcom in America, and he does a version of zigzag routine. Zigzag's really good as well, okay. Look at it right now on television. Zigzag, it's a classic illusion invented by a magician called Robert Harbin, okay, a British magician. The girl gets in the box and she's sort of cut into three pieces, okay. It's a really conventional bit of magic. Many people do do zigzag, okay. There's many ver variations of zigzag as well, okay. I think they were done by Wayne Dobson, the version as well, on British TV some years ago. But it's a great illusion. Confident does a beautiful version of singing a song okay the girl sings okay he dances around the box and then the box is cut into three pieces it's done really well okay beautiful kind of the 1950s kind of pastiche kind of routines really really good so check out this this is a lovely bit of um, music and dance a variation on the classic zigzag box routine have a look at this it's very good indeed and very entertaining zigzag box it's pretty good that zigzag box isn't it i like that. it's just a kind of a funny variation on, on, on a bit of classic magic really they've done really well i do like the way he adds a common in dance into the routine and takes a zigzag up a level from being a boring typical zigzag into quite entertaining zigzag kind of routine come he's very good at that isn't he very good at those kind of uh, narrative routines and making a routine even better than the original routine was. We then go from there to another amazing bit of magic, which I think was classic sort of Field's repertoire, actually. This is the Dancing Cane and also the Levitating Girl. They did this also on Confirm number 5 from 1983. This is a show when he vanished Statue of Liberty. He just originally did this show in 1978. 
on confirm number one, okay? This is a great illusion again. He does the dancing cane beautifully. His body starts, his kind of appearance, his demeanor, his body language, his, his heart is held up beautifully. Does it so well, dancing with the cane beautifully. Cane, the magic comes alive and dances around him be beautifully stuff, really well done, okay? So your lesson has to do dancing cane, which is another classic of magic. And after that, we then sink up a field, okay? Getting the girl on the couch, girl levitates on the couch, really beautifully done, okay? And then she kind of disappears. It's beautiful the illusion again, oh, the levitating girl, we've done really well, okay? with the cane, the cane dancing, the girl kind of levitating, it's a beautiful combination of two illusions together, beautiful done, I don't think I've seen anyone do dancing cane levitating girl any better than Gumfield does in this particular show, so sit back, relax, and we'll check out this now, a little clip of Gumfield doing the levitating girl with dancing cane, beautiful stuff, seriously, have a look at this. Now we know from there too, well Magic, he does some vignettes, so this is quite a low budget magic show. He does that, he has a magician on stage as well, a guest magician, who's quite funny, I think he started, no, it's pretty old in this, he was a very funny comedy of New York magician from the Bronx, I think, New York called Carl Ballantyne. Comfort loved him so much, he appears on the show, so you get a hold of Comfort number one on YouTube, have a look at it, have a look at Carl Ballantyne, very funny comedy routine, it's kind of comedy called pastiche kind of magic, very funny dude, have a look at this, there's a clip of Carl Ballantyne doing a very funny act, okay, with a kind of comedy magic, a bit like the English magician Tommy Cooper, okay, have a look at this, Carl Ballantyne doing amazing comedy bits of magic, have a look at this, it's really good.
Carbata, Carbata. And I'll go through the show after that, okay. I do find it quite funny, even like it's 45 years ago, isn't this show, isn't it? We then go to the classic. This is the classic magic that I feel really love doing. This is the um this is the amazing routine called the Hitchcock um uh, Psycho routine, that's what's called Psycho. Confident love Hitchcock. Don't confirm the biggest collection I heard from my friends. Confident has a huge collection of, of Alfred Hitchcock movies and memorabilia, okay, which he kept over the years. And Confident wants to do some magic along with Hitchcock theme. And he wants to take the, the shower scene from Psycho, the 1962 movie, and turn it into a stage kind of magic routine, okay, really good. And Confident goes off the stage basically, and there's a, there's a kind of a girl sitting in a rocking chair, an old granny in a rocking chair, isn't it? And a pretty girl gets in a shower, okay, the girl's in a shower cabinet shower in the shower cabinet behind it and, and the, the old hag the old lady walks through a little doorway and she comes into the bathroom okay it's all on stage on set and she gets the old uh, dagger thing and starts stabbing the curtain stabbing the curtain okay and suddenly pulls the curtain away and um a girl disappears okay that's a pretty impressive bit of magic to start with then the old hag comes forward drops the knife on the stage takes off her mask whatever and of course it's copperfield or feels ch changed into the old haggard kind of uh, witchy kind of woman with the knife. It's very impressive indeed, seriously. Kind of a very good kind of switch kind of routine, body switch kind of routine called the Psycho Illusion. He did a lot on his stage show. He did it many times on television, actually. I remember he did it at least three times on telly in the 1980s. He did it again, I think, in his Familiar Hour show in 1985, okay, when he was looking for some illusions. So he went and did this illusion again because it's such a beautiful, straightforward illusion. So check it out, Copperfield's Psycho Routine with a body switch piece in it as well. Very nice indeed. Have a look at this, okay? Twenty years old, this guy. He looks really impressive, doesn't he? I mean, he's twenty well older than twenty years old. He then does another nice routine, going back to the days of Harry Blackstone. This is a dad's handkerchief by Harry Blackstone. Harry Blackstone is a version. Now check out my video, Harry Blackstone, American magician. Blackstone was a great magician. His dad, Blackstone Senior, was a great magician with a big moustache. Okay, Harry Blackstone, okay, toured in the nineteen eighties and nineteen nineties. And he did the dance handkerchief routine, okay? Get a little table handkerchief, and Copperfield does this routine in a restaurant setting, okay, in a vignette with a girl. He's trying to impress the girl thing. The girl's not in love with him. He wants to get the girl to fall in love with him. He wants to show his love to her, you know what I mean? Roses don't work, so he gets a handkerchief off the table, okay? He's have a napkin. Napkin dance behind a big cloth, okay? Up his arms around his neck, around the cloth again. And the handkerchief zooms into a bar area, zooms into glass, out of a glass, into a bottle, out of a bottle, okay? Dance handkerchief flies everywhere, okay? It's beautifully done, okay? And again, the handkerchief disappears at the end of the routine, okay? And then Comfort produces a rose and gives it to the girl, so the girl falls in love with him, basically. It's a good routine indeed. Check it out. I love this routine, okay? It's actually pretty good. I remember seeing this stuff 30 odd years ago and think it's pretty good. Now looking at it now, it's pretty good even in 2021. This routine is very good indeed. Comfort doing an amazing version. And quite a big kind of style version of the classic Blackstone dancing handkerchief. Have a look at this as well. It's very good indeed, okay? <laughs>
say Godfather's very good with, with vignettes, but Godfather's narrative very good. He loves with vignettes and narrative, doesn't he? And what, the best thing about Godfather is is building stories and narratives around the illusions, taking the illusion to a new level because you're adding a narrative and story to the illusions, basically. That's the reason why Godfather is such a great magician. He does this over his whole career, building vignettes and stories and narratives around the magic, thus making the magic more spectacular by having a kind of extra story element to it. It makes the magic more emotional as it pulls heartstrings even more, doesn't it? As you know, watching the videos of magic as well. Godfrey does kind of another cheap routine. This is another routine he does, kind of a comedy routine. He gets in a box and the box is sawn in half. He's got a kind of comedy actress with her. Oh, Laverne and Shirley. Remember Laverne and Shirley? It's one of those girls anyway. And, and Godfrey gets in a box and the box is sawn like vertically in half with a big saw and the box opens up and it's actually not Godfrey there. Someone else is in there. Uh, there's another man inside the box. Godfrey has disappeared entirely. Someone else is in the box, okay. And Godfrey appears behind the camera filming the whole thing. It's pretty impressive, kind of nice, but it's simple, but not really brilliant bit of comedy switch magic illusion. Have a look at this as well. Pretty good. Not bad, not one of the best bits of magic. It's quite entertaining bit of filler magic on there as well. Got feel that it's a slightly lacking now magic with the show. We, we don't see an awful lot more magic on the show. I'm um, looking through it right now and here. I'm trying to find some more magic and get some more magic on it. Uh, and it's kind of dated a bit with 1978 kind of day. This is the era of the 1970s. He has a single one to do a bit of filler because he hasn't got enough material. And this is 1978, it's his first ever show. So give him a bit of a break. Because the next show he did in 1979 was even better with the floating crystal ball, wasn't it, of course. This show is very good nevertheless. He has a kind of a, a very kind of Marlin Dietrich kind of single one. Very dated 1970s singer one, you know, those kind of big light bulbs and kind of Marlon Dietrich kind of 650s, kind of 40s kind of stuff. So it has her singing a little bit, which is entertaining. She's quite fun. She's a bit of filler. Then we get an interesting bit here. We get a very interesting bit here. We actually get a bit of the classic uh, filmmaker, Orson Welles. Now, if you've ever seen Orson Welles, you might have seen Orson Welles interviews and stuff. Orson Welles, of course, is one of the biggest filmmakers of all time. He made Citizen Kane, okay, with some biggest films of all time. Probably number one in all time. And many people think Citizen Kane's best film of all time, okay? Back, made, was it back in May 1940 or something? That kind of period, wasn't it? Citizen Kane. And of course, he broke the rules of cinema, didn't he? Good old, uh, good old, uh, didn't he? Um, Orson Welles, didn't he? You know, here he is. He's about twenty stone, big beard, big kind of stomach, basically on stage performing magic. Now, people didn't know that Orson Welles was a really good magician. Okay, he wasn't a great magician. He was a very good magician. Okay, he takes on doing a mind reading trick, a prediction trick. He has a he has a bit of, basically, he has people on stage with him. As piles of books. Okay, guess get he has a a prediction of a word sealed in the book of ice. Okay. And the word is chosen random from a whole load of books by a member of the public, a real person, okay? The words decided chosen upon. And then now they've got the word, as they got the word itself, okay, written down and chosen randomly, completely randomly. They get a big uh, axe again, a big bit of knife, and cut the block of ice away. And from inside the block of ice, they pull out the prediction, okay, inside a vial, open the vial up, pop out a bit of paper, and the word on the bit of paper matches the word chosen by the guys with the books okay it's an amazing prediction illusion okay it's very well i mean i could even see how it works i think i know how it works looking at the video tape up again have a look at this bit of video tape and it's very good i would watch the original show and have a look at the original show on youtube and see this illusion this prediction it's a very good prediction indeed even i can't quite see how it works i think i know how it works now Maybe he switches the paper then, I think it's a paper switch at the end. Probably that's how it's done okay, and probably pretty simple. After all that palaver, a bit of theatre, but it's very good indeed. So do check out, if you're into film and theatre, and um, people like Orson Welles and Orson Welles History, this is a real must-see, Orson Welles doing a magic trick, okay? Check it out anyway. This is a bit of Orson Welles doing the amazing prediction word routine. Have a look at this as well, okay? <laughs> Wow. 
And of course, finally, the show. The show kind of uh, ends with quite a funny illusion. This is 1978. This is the era, era of disco. And having been subjected to 10 minutes of Orson Welles, which is very entertaining, we got Copperfield back again, okay? <laughs> He's back again at the end of, end of the routine, basically, doing a kind of disco routine. This is 1978, this is the height of disco, this is the height of sheep, the height of, um, all, of uh, all, all those kind of guys, isn't it? You know, disco routine, Donna Summer, isn't it? The kind of that era, 1978, isn't it? And of course, on comes Copperfield, looking like John Travolta from Tack Night Fever, okay? That's, that's the era, 1978, isn't it? He's, on, he's got a white suit on, a red shirt on, you know what I mean? It's funny, isn't it? Even today, it looks pretty good, even today, that 35 years later, whatever. But he's on stage with his glitter kind of stuff on, you know what I mean? The girl's dancing next to the blonde girl dancing. The blonde girl kind of lies on a, on a keyboard, okay? But it's quite inventive. Puts, um, you see her hand popping out, puts a red cloth over her, and then she starts levitating, you know, the classic astral levitation, okay? Flowing up in the air, down and up in the air kind of stuff, underneath this red cloth. And again, the classic astral levitation, if you know Ashra. It's a girl floating underneath the cloth. We whip the cloth again away, and of course the girl disappears entirely right in midair. It's a very impressive vanish indeed of a girl called the Astra Levitation and Vanish OK. It's done very well indeed, OK. Looks great. The girl, I love the little detail where the girl's hand pops out as well on the keyboard, which is very impressive. It looks very baffling indeed, OK. Pretty impressive. The girl floats right in midair, right around all this disco lights kind of stuff. Even though it's dated, and it's pretty dated, it still looks pretty good, OK. I must say, it's a pretty impressive illusion. I do like it. The Vanish of the Girl with the Astral Levitation and the Red Cloth. So it's done with a lovely kind of disco kind of routine, a lot of disco dancing. But it's funny, I must admit it's pretty good. I quite enjoy it indeed, seriously. a show okay so it's quite insane magic show now i want to show is what the show i wasn't going to do because i'm thinking well i've gone through all the other copperfield shows i've reviewed all the copperfield shows 16 shows or so up to about 2001 Last show was the Tornado of Fire, which is 2001. After that, didn't really do any TV shows at all in 2001. And he was about 45 years old at the time. He's now 65, I think, isn't he? But I have to say, these shows are fantastic shows. So go through the Copperfield shows. They're on YouTube. Have a look at this Copperfield number one show. It's very good indeed. You've got, of course, the girl levitating and the floating cane. You've got the beautiful car manipulation at the beginning of the show. You've got the amazing levitation of the girl at the cloth at the end of the show. Disco levitation. You've got Orson Welles as well in there. You've got car balance on there as well in there, okay? You've got the beautiful dancing handkerchief routine as well. You've got the zigzag routine as well in it. There's many good routines in this show, so it's really worth seeing this show okay we recommend it. it's a coffee number one from 1970 it's on youtube right now check it out please do okay it's a lovely magic show if it's a history of magic then please uh, check it out please also remember to subscribe hit my subscribe button to help me out please so i can bring more magic to you okay so please subscribe to help me out please do my channel magic might want to please do please click links below 
for 120, 130 videos of magic chat illusion that I've done. So please check out my channel, please do as well. For many videos about all kinds of stuff, Copperfield, Wayne Dobson, Paul Daniels, Doug Haining, okay, magic illusions that I'm doing as well, okay, card tricks and spectacular magic, cups and balls magic stuff that I'm doing as well. Check out my channel, please do and support me and please subscribe, okay, please do help me out to bring more magic to you. So look after yourselves again for a few more days, okay, all right, and see you again very soon, okay, with some more magic and chat and illusions. See you very soon. Bye for now.